general practice, the integrative approach is really a ground up approach to general practice from an integrative perspective. Other books written about general practice have really been written from a conventional perspective and at times there has been some complementary medicine attached to it, but this is what you would call a truly integrated approach to general practice. There are just so many things that uh, tend to be left out in the way that we're educated as doctors, things we don't know about, things we're never taught about, and therefore often we think that it must be important that really the evidence and public uh, interest and engagement is, is moving way ahead of where medical practice has been up, up to until now. So this is really something that uh, we're, as a profession, we need to get up to date and we need to be able to give our patients the right kind of advice and, and to be informed ourselves. Because if we're an uninformed doctor, then we have uninformed patients. Integrative medicine is a philosophy of practicing and a philosophy of living, really, and it involves healthcare that enhances the patient's well-being. It's very patient-centred and it includes therapies that might be from a whole different range of sources, different medical philosophies or healthcare philosophies, different health systems. And you personalise and individualise therapeutic plans for patients. But also it requires the healthcare practitioner to literally be a role model for their patients and to live the philosophy of integrated healthcare. And I think too, in order to be an integrated doctor, we need to break down some of the, the artificial barriers that we construct in our own minds, so that there aren't divisions between what we call conventional healthcare, uh, as if it's divided from the importance of lifestyle advice, and the person's mental and emotional and social and spiritual well-being, or that evidence-based complementary therapies shouldn't be considered. So really it's a matter of taking in its totality what works for this patient and what might be uh, productive and, and useful, not just to manage illness, but also to think about wellness and preventing illness. I think that there is one school but many different ways of thinking and it really depends on the personal and professional experience of the practitioner themselves as to how far along in their evolution regarding integrated medicine they've come. And uh, it can be quite daunting having done your medical training to then look at a whole extra area of study to upskill in the area of integrated medicine uh, and all of the uh, extra work and study that, that entails. But uh, I think that there is some resistance from some quarters, there is great curiosity in other quarters and there is great competence amongst others. I don't think we could expect any one practitioner to have their head around every single modality, every piece of knowledge in the field. But I think if a doctor has their areas of knowledge and expertise but knows that there may be a lot more outside of that particular area of expertise and if there's a readiness to seek more information or to refer, then I think that's a much better situation. I think there are different levels of readiness for doctors to accept integrated medicine as the mainstream, and I believe it will become the new mainstream. And uh, some doctors are resistant, uh, some are cynical, some are curious and wanting to know more, and others are highly competent in this area. And really this is not only about the doctors and their attitude, but it's really about servicing patients' needs and patients' requirements for better health. And I think what Integrative Medicine does is it opens the opportunity for greater participation of the patient in their healthcare as well. A really important part of um, Integrative Medicine is the patient's empowerment and involvement. I'm just reminded too of a uh, quotation, which I'll slightly paraphrase from, from one of Einstein's uh, contemporaries. The realisation of any truth it goes through three stages. In the first stage it is ridiculed, in the second stage it is resisted, and in the third stage it is taken as self-evident. And I think that we're somewhere between uh, resistance and self-evident, because I think that we'll take a lot of this as being self-evident maybe 10 or 20 years from now. I would say that change in general practice is inevitable. And that'll be for a lot of good reasons. It's not just because it's what our patients might be interested in and what they're using, and so we need to help them to make safe and informed decisions that are based on good evidence, but also because um, in, in many ways that uh, 
we can't afford to have a system that ignores these kinds of approaches of prevention and lifestyle and more integrative management approaches that may be a less invasive, that it may be safer, that it may be cost a lot less. So rather than change being a possibility, I do actually think it's an inevitability that we can either take it willingly, or if we don't, we'll have to accept unwillingly. <laughs> <laughs> change is happening all the time. It has always happened in general practice and will continue to happen. And it is inevitable. The direction it takes is something that I think does need to be carefully guided. And one of the reasons behind this textbook is to provide a credible and uh, important resource for general practitioners who are wanting to pursue this path of uh, integrating medicine in the interests of their patients. I don't think it's really making too great a claim to say that this textbook is likely to revolutionise the way students look at general practice because it does really uh, refashion the training of general practitioners from the ground up. It gets them thinking about uh, things like just setting up their consulting room, taking a history, examining the patient, thinking about all the things that might be influencing that patient's presentation on that day, all of the ways that they can help a patient to recover from illness or to remain well. And so I, I really don't, don't think it's too great a claim to say it will revolutionise the way medical students look at general practice. Yes, and I think that the shift towards integrated medicine is not just a shift in terms of knowledge and information. I think it's a philosophical shift that is much needed. And to think more broadly, to think more holistically, is not just a a philosophical kind of scar, I think it's actually a practical reality that we need to adopt. And so the adoption of integrative medicine, I think, in many ways is not just empowering for the patient, but also for the doctor themselves to actually think there's a lot more that I can provide my patient to not just improve an outcome for a condition, but also to help them um, improve side effects perhaps of treatment, to, to manage uh, the symptoms a person might, might be experiencing. So I think it actually adds a lot of strings to the bar. I think the interesting thing too, Craig, is that along the way, I think doctors who are trained in the integrative model change their own lives as well, because they see results in their patients, and uh, I guess the way that they would normally have thought about their own personal health and well-being has to shift when they see the results that patients are getting from this treatment. So that transformational experience that patients often have uh, when they try something different which really helps them is also, I think, part of what shifts our thinking when, uh, as a doctor when we have a transformational experience by exploring a new area, maybe for ourselves personally or maybe for our patients and actually seeing something works. And that often gets us thinking in a different way and saying, well, maybe there's more to, to this than I've previously thought.